So this is a course on risk-based engineering. We are into the module life prediction. And then in life prediction, it is the related aspect. Because in previous lecture, we have discussed uh, the background of life testing procedure. Life testing is very important. We are giving, <coughs> we are creating a separate module for this. The reason is, uh, it is, life prediction is one thing as part of the collaboration uh, uh, approach. But then it can really uh, provide an input for our prognostics and health management and physics of failure approach. So, because most of the experiments over there are done in uh, using the uh, life test uh, uh, life test procedure also. There are other things also like FATI and all, they will require a different, uh, you know, uh, setup and all. But then life testing, especially for electrical and electronic component, um, this topic is a core topic actually. Okay. So, let us start now. Now, uh, life testing as a subject or as a qualification technique has a different requirement at different stages of the plant. I will come to that thing uh, in next one or two slides. Um, uh, but then once we do that, uh, every time we do one common th thing which comes in front of us is what is the definition of failure criteria? If I qualify or not qualify a component, what is the basis of rejecting or accepting the component? Because uh, components are ch okay, replacing the component um, Repair is easy option, but replacement is a very expensive option, and it comes to it is prohibited. Uh, it is become prohibitive uh, when we when we want to replace the component, uh, and then uh, what is the expectation for for the uh, in the future? You know, because uh, if I operated a thirty a plant for thirty years, and if I want to take some decision, so for me the criteria should be clear. And whether I should accept it or not accept it, accept it based on the situation that is there in front of me. Otherwise, uh, we end up doing uh, not a good job. So, because it is resource intensive, you know. Uh, then uh, this uh, live testing is a really, I would say, uh, very interesting and integral, integral part of refurbishment potential exploit. Uh, if a plant has to be refurbished, refurbished means extended maintenance. That means if elaborate maintenance has to be done uh, on the plant, uh, that means many components will be replaced also because it is for one year, two years, something like that. So the plant is shut down for that much period. So, uh, so uh, whether we can qualify the component for another 10, 20, 15 years or we have to replace those components. And in refurbishment also, there are some components which are like uh, they uh, life limiting component. So what to do for those components, you know? So, so first we, we should see those components which are life limiting. How much is the remaining life is there? Then uh, uh, come, come to the dais and say, okay, if the uh, life limiting component has a life of uh, 70 years, then and we, I am into the 40 years or uh, 50 years, then for other components, I should make an acceptance criteria or uh, rejection criteria for other 20 years with my own safety margins or my uh, uncertainty characterization. You know, because uh, like any other module, the uncertainty characterization is part of life testing also. Uh, basis for categorization we'll discuss and qualification for expected service. Uh, I think I discussed this. Uh, life limiting properties. What are the life limiting properties even for the comp component uh, which are not life limiting, limiting for the plant? So that will, the life limiting property will tell what is the remaining useful life. So we get a very important parameter from here. Uh, so as I told, mentioned that you know uh, this uh, different stages of the plant, they require different strategy and uh, different approaches uh, for, uh, for um, as far as the life testing is concerned or quali qualification is concerned. So let us say general procurement and testing, a plant is operating or even otherwise also, uh, some procurement and all, uh, all that. So here life testing means, um, uh, choose a product, uh, go to the vendor's end, tell, uh, try to give it a mean time between failure, mean time to failure and to uh, what is printed uh, on that printation, try to do some experiment in our chamber uh, and try to see whether it is uh, meeting the uh, vendor's quotation. Okay? Uh, so uh, we accept or reject it. Now in design stage is the, or, or I would say pre-design stage, doing this kind of test, it helps in uh, um, uh, um, you know, consolidating our requirement of the component. Why? Because we know 
कि व्हाट काइंड ऑफ टेस्टिंग व्हाट इज द लाइफ ऑफ द कंपोनेंट एंड यू नो सो वन सिंपल फिगर लाइक फाइव ईयर प्लस माइनस कैन मे चेंज अवर डिसीजन ओके वी मे नॉट बॉदर फॉर द रिसोर्सेस सो डिजाइन स्टेजेस प्रोक्योरमेंट स्टेजेस व्हेन वी आर पुटिंग द ऑर्डर दिस टाइप ऑफ एस्टिमेट्स नाउ इट इज दे आर बिकमिंग लिटिल नॉट कॉमन आई वुड से बट इट इज डिस्कस्ड एक्चुअली यू नो so formally it may not be put into the tender but then it is uh, uh, we have to give evidence ki this component will survive or the critical mode is uh, you know bearings or critical component or some uh, you know uh, some other mode like so uh, we we try to know the remaining life and then construction stages during construction stages it, it is a civil structure before and during the quality assurance program determines the remaining life of the component mind you because if the quality program is not there our structure uh, if we uh, if there is any compromise uh, normally it doesn't happen because all the uh, structures are built uh, based on some uh, standards and we have to have evidence of those material cross validation and all that but then if it happens it is uh, it is uh, it is not a undesired practice uh, it is it is uh, it is not desirable i would say um, then commissioning commissioning is a pre stage of operation so that means in commissioning uh, whatever you see on the butt up curve the left side of uh, high failure rate dropping down to uh, low that is the uh, infant mortality period um, the, uh, there is an attempt that before commissioning or during commissioning we try to precipitate those failures and get cleared when we come into useful reason for operations so that we do not have a uh, uh, few 1% 10% will keep ha- keep happening but then uh, for better part uh, you will be, you have already got ridden off uh, those uh, uh, noises of um, unintended failures actually you know and uh, during operation and maintenance qualification during procurement during uh, operating procedures uh, during uh, training uh, everywhere the quality assurance or uh, you know component if we are authorizing an operator for 3 years why 3 years why not 4 years why not 2 years so these kind of questions will come uh, we don't do testing but since we have our database that uh, you know um, uh, so these are uh, uh, you know very salient features where uh, at the back of our mind is that uh, the the readiness of the equipment human or uh, any system for the plant to operate in a uh, safe and reliable manner okay uh, and we have direct indirect evidence based approach for this kind of thing uh, refurbishment for life ext- extension uh, this is where after operation if we see the that plant is going into maintenance for more very frequently then it is better a, a decision is a conscious decision is taken that let us go for refurbishment the trouble maker component should be replaced the other one who will be candidate component for trouble making they should also be replaced and let us get rid of this uh, uh, structures and component for another 10 15 years and then once shutdown is there even in, even in shutdown also uh, quality assurance procedure should be there because there should not be undue risk or undue uh, events in the uh, uh, so that uh, so that we have a safe environment uh, after uh, shutdown now uh, let us see this matrix uh, this is called ssc different type of ssc are there and health monitoring uh, matrix you know let us say life limiting component uh, the one which is there uh, on the le- left hand side and let us see what kind of things are required you know so this structure they determine the life of the component so structural qual- qualification periodically whatever may be the methods uh, yeah, in, it could be in service inspection it could be um, you know um, uh, ndt techniques uh, which are there it co- could be a quality assurance per se methodology uh, where not only the structural thing or or, or chemical process and all those things they are Uh, the the samples are taken to understand what is the remaining life uh, of this uh, life limiting component and prognostics and health management why i am telling prognostics and health management because in uh, uh, in in the in the older plant uh, um, it, there is an assessment that uh, plants which are 50 or 60 year old the regulators uh, or even the uh, facility would not would, would like to monitor Uh, this uh, life limiting component uh, th- their health and prognostics and health management uh, earlier it used to be called as condition monitoring cm 
बट नाउ सिंस वी हैव एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी सो प्रोग्नोस्टिक्स एंड हेल्थ सो इवन वेन वी डू रिफर्बिशमेंट इट इज़ बेटर टू यूज दिस टेक्निक फॉर गेटिंग ऑनलाइन सिग्नल फॉर एनी कैटास्ट्रॉफिक और एनी इवन टाइम टाइम रिलेटेड डिग्रेडेशन इश्यूज एंड द एंड वी वी आर डब्ल्यू श्योर दैट माई कंपोनेंट हैज गॉट सफिशेंट रिमेनिंग यूजफुल लाइफ ओके नाउ इफ इट इज सेमी इंटीग्रल कंपोनेंट दैट मीन्स इट कैन बी रिप्लेस बट विद लॉट ऑफ रिसोर्सेज डिफिकल्टी चैलेंजेस एंड वी हैव टू एंश्योर दैट प्लांट शुड नॉट गो टू द पॉइंट ऑफ नो रिटर्न ओके सो सो सिक्स इज दे आर सेमी इंटीग्रल कंपोनेंट सो देयर रिप्लेसमेंट इज चैलेंजिंग सो स्ट्रक्चरल क्वालिफिकेशन प्रोफेस परफॉर्मेंस सिग्नेचर ऑल ऑफ यू मे बी नोइंग दैट द प्रोसेस आर परफॉर्मेंस सिग्नेचर प्रोसेस सिग्नेचर मीन्स वेरियस पैरामीटर्स ऑफ द प्लांट एंड परफॉर्मेंस सिग्नेचर मीन्स एनी वाइब्रेशन टेम्परेचर और एनी इशू विच प्रेसिपिटेट्स वेन द इक्विपमेंट इज ऑपरेटिंग नॉइस लेवल ऑल दो थिंग्स सो दे शुड बी मॉनिटर्ड फॉर दिस एन डी टी टेक्निक्स नॉन डिस्ट्रक्टिव आई एस आई इन सर्विस इंस्पेक्शन टेक्निक्स दे आर वेरी यूजफुल इंक्लूडिंग कंडीशन मॉनिटरिंग ओके ओके कंडीशन मॉनिटरिंग वी डोंट डू इट बिकॉज इट इज बेसिकली मेंट फॉर डायनामिक इक्विपमेंट यू नो सो देन वी हैव दिस क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस एंड पी एच एम आई वुड हैव टेक ऑल द पी एच एम बिकॉज नाउ इफ द न्यू प्लांट्स आर बींग बिल्ट देन आइडियली स्पीकिंग पी एच एम प्रोविजन शुड बी देयर at least for the core uh, 20% component uh, where we do not want any uh, surprise at the same times where we want want to mo monitor them uh, and we get online signature for these type of components uh, in olden times when there was not a development of much of science and technology and all uh, the for piping uh, health monitoring from outside under the uh, ground uh, they would keep some coupons so periodic inspection of coupons Uh, some number of coupons and then uh, every five years you take out one coupon and see what kind of degradation it is something like canaries you know so what kind of degradation is taking place and uh, then for, then we come to the third category dynamic rotating equipment it could be electrical and all so here process and performance monitoring like vibration temperature noise that will that will give you some signature on this degradation online condition monitoring will also give you a signature and then uh, quality quality assurance and phm so uh, because i want to give a message here that psa phm is a new technology but given the um, hands in hand uh, go uh, for pof and uh, database driven technique uh, this technique um, only it's a matter of time that it will become integral part of all uh, system designs actually okay repair replacement is a very wonderful strategy because uh, in operation for most of the part we manage through onm only and isi then uh, electronics digital uh, system yes we have process performance online condition monitoring uh, board temperature air temperature and all that and then uh, we have live testing method applicable for electronics and electrical systems and then we have a, uh, for for them uh, we have phm and of course online uh, parameter so these two techniques they go hand in hand um, even the qa also because our confidence ahead of now if you see it is coming from uh, qa and it is coming from process parameter monitoring for a good part actually and this matrix uh, is not a uh, uh, is only indicative one uh, every industry can have their own experience i am talking about my experience here but the point here is uh, we can prepare the matrix we can identify the importance of this uh, uh, parameters and we can have some sort of a um, look up table uh, which component is coming what and all in our technical specification okay then definition of failure of acceptance i have highlighted more than this the definition of failure and acceptable performance matrix is very critical to this thing so let us not um, uh, it was required for the sake of completeness of this lecture so i have put it so uh, it is a self reading type of material and you can go through it uh, it is one of the most challenging job and uh, uh, if by de defining the failure or acceptable performance uh, where a lot of science also has to go into it uh, and then putting a uh, life test program uh, can be a, can be a very effective strategy uh, for all and all sorts of components actually okay now material degradation and its characterization 
Actually, this slide is also a self-explanatory one, but for the sake of the completeness, we will go. So, uh, I have got here uh, six category of components. So, atomic or nuclear component, they are basically, um, uh, you know, uh, if we talk about the mechanical component, pump, heat exchanger, they are similar to any other category. But for nuclear point of view, like uh, a rubber gasket degradation uh, will be a, uh, then uh, a steel uh, uh, embrittlement will be a, a new phenomena here. So, um, so this kind of thing they come into the picture and uh, uh, resistance to re radiation is the criteria basically followed uh, for designing uh, these components, especially the material selection. Now chemical uh, property, chemical properties again we said here corrosion resistance, you know the material should be corrosion resistant and then um, uh, uh, the pH and conductivity and all these parameters they come during plant operation because these two they keep a tab on uh, corrosion thing, uh, products you know in the system and then activation energy is one of the thing which will tell us uh, uh, where the uh, what is the rate of uh, rate of uh, uh, corrosion or degradation and uh, hygroscope and all this is one thing. So uh, ideally speaking a component for nuclear is selected which is resistant to corrosion okay okay yeah, but then all the material cannot have re so there uh, let us say for uh, nuclear power plant a layer for uh, is created in the plant uh, so that the carbon steel corrosion rate uh, can be reduced. Uh, or you know it, can, it acts as a layer uh, you know between uh, water flowing water and the material uh, so that uh, so this is done right in the beginning of the plant and its effectiveness checked all through the uh, stages of the plant. So one is the corrosion uh, uh, issue from material point of view so material selection second thing is how we maintain in operation so uh, in operation pH conductivity, conductivity are the parameter that we, we see. Uh, so that water chemistry me measurement itself will reduce the corrosion uh, degradation. So material and then monitoring of uh, process parameters. Then mechanical uh, system. Mechanical system has a host of this thing like for example creep. Creep comes into action when there is a high temperature uh, uh, high temperature and under, under which the material properties they changes and this phenomena is uh, and under stressful conditions. So creep uh, temperature, high temperature and given stressful condition, it, uh, it results in the creep phenomena. Uh, similarly, FUTI, uh, FUTI failure is one of the uh, biggest, uh, uh, biggest issue in, uh, for mechanical system uh, because um, normally uh, if you take the safety margin and all that, component does not fail on its own unless until there, is, there was some uh, de uh, defect uh, and which was not uh, um, detected by our in-service inspection technique or other techniques. Uh, and then uh, one day uh, it, it uh, just is a catastrophic thing but then it is an isolated phenomena. But ductility is something cyclic uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical phenomena which uh, uh, even though if it remains under the limit of design pressure and this thing uh, the material uh, um, stresses remain in the limit the fatigue can cause the uh, uh, fracture. Similarly, the um, yeah, you, we have this uh, coefficient of, fr of friction. Friction is one more thing like bearing and all that. Uh, its life has to be measured and how much um, bearing life is there and uh, uh, um, um, you know how the balls are. So these are the things which are, uh, which are um, becoming important uh, for, um, for, the, for the life extension or life prediction program. Uh, if we see the electrical thing, uh, there are electrical parameters, dielectric constant, dielectric strength, electrical conductivity uh, and these are the things they become prohibitive and they are also, in fact, if I have to tell uh, for elect ele electronics or electrical also the connectors, uh, when there is oxide formation, so it is a chemical phenomena uh, or environmental phenomena, it limits the life and sometimes it uh, might create uh, uh, transient into the system. Then it is a thermal uh, thing, so thermal uh, coefficient, uh, flammability, melting point, they become uh, important for monitoring the health of the uh, mega component like pump and uh, you know, generator and all that. But at the same time, they might create their own safety issues also. Uh, so uh, it, it has to be monitored and kept under control. Uh, 
temperature induced degradation has been one of the major issues of uh, micro and power electronics. So, for uh, uh, if do, we do not maintain the temperature, uh, then the component will uh, fail before what you would have imagined. Because the way you cannot run a pump without a lubrication, similarly, if we do not maintain temperature and humidity, the, uh, the same phenomena applies to uh, even electro electrical and electronics. And particularly the power electronics. Power electronics, they are, the heat dissipation is very high because they are processing very high uh, energy uh, parameters like current, voltage and all that. So here, uh, that's why the power electronics reliability is uh, not as good as because there if you take the capacitor which is almost like 200 uh, microfarad uh, capacitor there itself there are there, there are problems the phenomena of rupture has been observed so i would say the uh, the climb uh, this uh, conditions uh, operating conditions are much more hostile in power electronics and if we do not pay attention to the cooling modes and uh, you know uh, dust free environment and things like that then we cannot uh, maintain the system so magnetic stresses Induced magnetic stress due to high voltage causes uh, degradation or breakdown of uh, dielectrics in semiconductor devices. Uh, these uh, phenomena have been seen, uh, and of course, uh, uh, these are one. Uh, these are the uh, these are the uh, reasons they have been found in many uh, semiconductor devices failure. So, uh, having discussed this, now let us discuss what are the uh, characterization, material characterization uh, techniques. So one is, uh, all of us may be uh, aware, so I have not gone into the details of how, what, it is basically to complete the uh, sequence or complete the topic, I have given a very descriptive treatment to the uh, subject. So microstructure means if life testing the microstructure uh, characterization is very important, uh, even if, if we are trying to analyze a failure, I would like to, mechanical failure, I would like to uh, understand the what kind of failure it was. It was uh, in shear, it was in tension uh, and uh, what are the slip component of the failure and all that. Uh, so um, microstructural examination is very impro important. Why? Because has it has the failure uh, started from the grain boundary or uh, so uh, before putting any sample uh, into the under the microscope we have to do a surface finish and those surface finish uh, to an acceptance level uh, will be able to re reveal those properties why the component had failed. Okay? So mode of failure and all those things will come out. So microstructure characterization is very important and uh, here the grain boundary and grain size uh, they become very dominant parameter. If the grain size is uh, relatively bigger then cracks uh, are possible. So cracks can be defined uh, if it is very fine. Uh, then probably material can be called as cohesive or relatively cohesive and uh, cracks or possibility will be less given the other property at uh, uh, comparable level. Chemical composition. Chemical composition of the material like we selection of material to a large extent it goes by uh, the alloying element. Like if I am using a 0.5 percent nibium uh, with zircaloy, so th then we get a required property for high temperature, high pressure system. Uh, like uh, pressure type or uh, uh, pressure tube type reactors, uh, we have this kind of structure which is, uh, you know, uh, chemical composition of material is also important from corrosion point of view. So corrosion, uh, uh, if we want uh, uh, corrosion to be minimal level, then carbon steel, it is not as good as stainless steel, but carbon steel has some properties uh, which uh, like when we talk about the higher stresses and all that. Uh, it perform better, but from corrosion point of view, so corrosion point of view, you have to provide a layer and use the same thing. Um, uh, when we talk about the uh, stainless steel, it is a corrosion resistant material. It is corrosion resistant material. Even if it is under water and even in hostile condition, it, it may not corrode unless the pitting or something happens. Uh, so, uh, so we have to keep in this mind ki how chemical, uh, they are much deeper subject. Uh, they cannot be limited to just so. 5 minutes or 1 minute of discussion. So, uh, but then I am just trying to tell the points which precipitate, precipitates out uh, through the exposure that we have. Uh, now, uh, the next is uh, material crystal structure. 
uh, what kind of structure because uh, atoms are arranged in a crystal and crystal defines the material property. Uh, properties of material, especially the mechanical properties are governed by the arrangement of the atoms. There, this arrangement is called crystal structure. A crystal, uh, crystal structure and symmetry play a role in determining many of the properties such as cleavage, uh, electronic uh, band structure and optical uh, transparency. Okay. And uh, for understanding the failure, initiation, propagation of microscope or nano microscope requires an understanding of material behavior at crystal level. So uh, this is a material science uh, domain uh, wherein uh, not only the material uh, constitution, uh, alloying code constitution, but how it can fail. Those things are also uh, studies. There are mechanisms like slip, lattice, defects and dislocation. Uh, while a micro level, the bulk defects like voids, uh, pre-existing uh, cracks, uh, blow holes provide the site for uh, failure of initiation because uh, in fracture mechanic, the one of the big question is failure initiation and failure propagation. So uh, failure initiation points or opportunities are more than the material is not fit for uh, the intended purpose. Uh, and similarly failure propagation also because failure propagate also through the grain boundaries. So what kind of uh, grain boundaries are there, coarse, fine and all uh, that will uh, determine how the uh, propagation has taken place. The basic assumption in failure analysis is that material strength and fracture strength is governed by microstructure and bulk. That is uh, uh, that is a fundamental thing that we have. Uh, for example, a plastic deformation of crystalline material uh, occurs by slip which is defined as uh, slipping of planes uh, of one atom over another. Uh, in many books, th these mechanisms have been wonderfully explained by uh, illustration and figures and all that. While the edge uh, dislocation, uh, which can be visualized as a having one part, part way uh, in a perfect crystal, uh, accommodating a part uh, plane of atoms. Fine. Uh, similarly, uh, the formation of grain boundary during the uh, liquid crystallization phase also determines the, uh, the mechanical properties. For example, smaller grain size favors higher strength as the uh, larger grain boundary provides favorable condition for crack and initiation of propagation. So having discussed this, uh, because live testing, we test the material, then we do micro characterization and till we do micro characterization, we cannot understand the failure or we cannot understand the failure mechanism. So this is the complete story about the live testing. Okay. And uh, uh, so here we have discussed the qualification, then at various stages of the plant, how we require qualification approaches, material degradation characteristics we have seen, major characterization of approaches and uh, uh, now. Uh, next le lecture, uh, we will come down again back to accelerated life testing models and methods. So that will be lecture 3. Uh, with this, we conclude this talk and uh, the references for this chapter I have given here, you will see after uh, all the lectures. So wherever I have put the bracket 1, 2, 3, 10, 15, those things you will find here. So that they are, they are available to you as a ready reference uh, for further studies or even for detailed analysis and all and studies. Thank you very much.